hello hello guys welcome back to the channel today we are going to solve this lit code question which is minimum number of moves to seat everyone so uh, let's just go through the problem description once uh, basically there are n, n seats and there are n students in a room you are given an array seats of length n where seats of i is the position of the i seat you are also given the array students of length n where students of j is the position of the jth student okay you may perform the following moves in any number of times increase or decrease the position of the ith student by one that is either we can move the, him to the right which is x plus one or to the left which is x minus one return the minimum number of moves required to move each student to a seat such that no sh two students are in the same seat okay Note that there may be multiple seats or students in the same position at the beginning. So basically, what they are asking is that we are given two input data. One is seats and the other one is students. So uh, basically, we have we have multiple positions, and at these positions, at these positions, we are having seats, and at these positions, we are having students. And what we need to do is we need to move these students to these seats so that they can sit but we cannot move them randomly we cannot move this guy to this seat this guy to this seat this seat you know we just need to we need to return the minimum number of moves we need to find the optimal optimal solution you know we just uh, we need to try to move the uh, students you know as as less moves as we can that's what I'm trying to say like you know uh, we, so okay okay let's let's go through this example in order to uh, understand the question more more uh, easily I mean so basically we have seats at 3 1 and 5 basically we have seats at 3 1 and 5 and we have students at 2 7 and 4 right now what I'll do is I know that you know I need to move these students to these seats right I need to move these students to these seats so what they said was you we can only perform we, we can only move one student one step at a time I can either move the student towards the right or towards the left only one step one step but we can do this operation in any number of times means you know if we are going from here to here it's like two steps we can do this any number of times but uh, we can do one step at a time so let's see how are we going to solve this question so I see that I see that there are uh, chairs at first position third position and fifth position and students at these positions right now what I'll do is I can either move this move this guy towards the left or towards the right it will either in either cases you know it will only take one step right so let's say I took the right chair let's say I took the right chair one then what I'll do is I, I need to move this guy to this chair because I cannot move this guy to this chair right so I, I can only move this guy to this chair so it will take one step and you know the only chair left is one and uh, the only guy left is this guy right so i need to move him here but i cannot do it directly right as uh, mentioned in the question i can only move one step at a time either x plus one or towards x minus one so i need to do multiple steps so one two three four and five it will be one plus one plus five which is seven right so if you do this way the answer is seven but there is an optimal case what is that case means what is that case means I'll move this guy to here and I'll move this guy to here it will take one step one step and I'll move two steps to come here so it will be four so the optimal way is four right and we have another one which is uh, four one five and we have seats at 4, 1, 5 and 9 and we have students at 1, 3, 2 and 6. We have students at 1, 3, 2, 
and 6 so if you observe carefully if you observe carefully right now th there is a student already at the seat so so there is no need for us to move the student to another seat right he's already sitting in a seat why why we want to you know like um, you know pull him out and you know throw him in another seat you know there's no need for that right so in this case we're we're good with this person so we'll go to the next one and we'll see that what is the nearest chair you know this is not available since this is already occupied so what i'll do is i'll go to this one which is two steps for this person i'll go to the this one which is two steps and for this person i'll go to this one which is three steps two plus two plus three which is 7 right so the answer is 7 now let's look at another example in order to get a clear uh, idea of what's happening in this question so I'll just copy the, the same one so we have seats at uh, sorry just give me one minute this is not working so we have uh, in this in this example we have two seats at the position two that means we don't have this guy here we don't have this cha chair here we have two chairs at this position you know like uh, they have already mentioned that you know there can be multiple seats or students at the same position at the beginning right so we can have multiple chairs at the same position and we have two chairs at six as well one and two we have two chairs at six and we have a student at one We have a student at one and we have a student at three. Okay, we don't have a chair here, right? Oh, I'm sorry. We have a student at three, we have a student at two as well. We have a student at 2 and we have a student at 6. So we don't have this student and we don't have this student. So this is basically it guys. So, so right now we are having 4 students and you know if you observe carefully there, there are already 2 students who are already in the seat right. So there is no point in moving them. So for, for this, the first student, you know, I'll move him to this, this seat and this third student, I'll move him to fifth seat. So basically what I'm doing was, if you observe carefully, I'm just sorting, right? So they have given something, if you, if you observe here, if you observe here, I'm just sorting the seats. I'm just having the first seat at the first place, fourth seat at the fourth place, fifth seat at the fifth place and ninth seat at the ninth place. And I'm, what I'm doing is, and I'm sorting the students as well. And I'm keeping the first student at the first place, the second student at the second place, third student at the third place, sixth student at the sixth place. So that, you know, if I have any overlapping, uh, you know, overlapping student and the uh, chair, that means if the student is already sitting in the chair, you know, by sorting, we, we, can, we, can, we can fix these people, right? If you observe here, you know, we see that the first the first student is at the first position but the first seat at the is at the second position so if we f if we follow this array where we won't be able to you know find the most optimal solution so that's why we need to sort the array and after sorting the array you know all the students will be arranged to the nearest chair locations and from them you know we can just we can just find out the difference between the student and the nearest chair you know 
I'll just explain you with this example. You know, I'll just solve this array. It, it will be fun for five nine, and I'll solve this student array. It will be one two three six, right? So if you observe carefully, the first student is already aligned. So these are also aligned. So the number of the number of C changes will be zero. Now the second student, he is he is assigned to number four, right? Which is similar. You know, we, which we can also see here, right? So it, number two will be assigned to here, which is the difference is two, and the number three is assigned to five. The number three is assigned to five. The difference is two, and the number six is assigned to nine. The difference is three, right? The the summation of these all these differences is the answer. So now let's look at the code. So this is just the code, guys. You know. I'm just sorting the seats and I'm just sorting the students and uh, what I'm doing was you know I'm just looping through the entire array I'm just looping through the entire array and I'm finding the absolute value absolute value is nothing but the you know even if we have negative values this absolute function will give us the uh, positive value suppose if we are uh, you know like subtracting seats from students right Sometimes you know seats may be greater, or sometimes the student number may be greater. But we just want the positive number of steps, right? So that is the reason I'm uh, applying the absolute function, and then I'm just adding it to the difference. And at the end, I'm just reading the difference. That's it, guys. And uh, what is the time complexity and space complexity means? The time com complexity will be. For the sorting, we'll be taking order of n log n. So since we are doing the sorting twice, we'll be taking order of n log n log n for this, and n log n for this, and we are looping for you know like uh, till the length of the array, which is nothing but n. So this is the time complexity, and uh, we can we can simplify this, and we can write it in this way since this is the worst time complexity that we can achieve and when it comes to space complexity we're not using any extra space right we're just using an uh, variable we, uh, which takes constant space so the space complexity will be constant so it will be order of one so that's it guys or uh, yeah. yeah that's it Thank you guys if you find this these diagrams helpful you know you know like the video and uh, subscribe so that you know you can find more sort of more diagrams like this in the future all right guys bye